Hi, I'm R.T. Kendall. I want to talk to you about angels. Recently, uh, we did uh, on my Twitter uh, a series of, of little things about angels. That was because during the Christmas season, I came to about 10 or 12 verses that talk about angels in the Christmas story. And then I put various questions, and I don't think we've ever had a response quite like it. It made me see that people are interested in angels and fascinated with angels. Now, that said, I'm not sure that that is good. What I mean by that, in my pastoral experience over the years, those people who get really interested in the supernatural, like angels or even the demonic, I've never thought that they were very spiritual. I, I'm not their judge, but I'm going by the fact that some who seldom would come to church, uh, and then when they would come to church, they wanted to talk about things like that. And I always was worried about them. And so too, when there's a fascination with angels, I'm not sure it's, it's always good. That said, the Bible talks about angels, and we need to know about them, and uh, I want to talk to you today about them. They are called ministering spirits. Uh, that's the way it's put in Hebrews chapter 1. Are not all angels ministering spirits to serve those who will inherit salvation? I find it interesting that it says the angels minister to those who will inherit. That means, in some cases, they're not even converted yet. In other words, before a person is saved, God says angels to those who will be saved. And this explains how you, if you can recall, before you became a Christian, you could see God's hand on your life. You were protected, you were preserved, and you think, oh, someone is looking out for me. That means that angels were sent to you even before you were saved. Now, in a recent uh, blog, or maybe it was uh, on my Twitter, I made the statement that angels have no will of their own. And a lot of people wrote in and said, wait a minute, what about the angels that rebelled against God? Obviously, they had a will of their own. And you're quite right. We don't know the exact number. Some think that one-third of the angels, based upon a verse in Revelation chapter 12, one-third of the angels rebelled. Apparently, Lucifer, uh, the chief of the angels, uh, we call him Lucifer, the son of the morning, uh, he recruited every angel in God's universe, or the realm, wherever they were, and got them to rebel. And the truth is, he pulled a, perhaps, probably one-third of them. Now, what about the angels that didn't fall? They were those who rebelled and they are preserved, and their doom is certain. And they make up what we call the demonic. And evil spirits in this world were previously angels, but now they've fallen. Those who didn't fall, who did not accept uh, the invitation to rebel, those who would not go along with Satan, they're called elect angels. That's the word Paul uses in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21. He says to Timothy, I charge you in the sight of God and, and Christ Jesus and the elect angels. That means that the angels that did not rebel, called elect angels, are those that would be ministering to you. Now, a lot of this will be speculation. We'll know more in heaven when we get there about angels. But some of the things that we can know, that we put together, we know that God uses angels uh, even when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we're told when he uh, sweat great drops of blood and said, Lord, if you will, let this, pat, uh, this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And we're told in Luke chapter 22, verse 43, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So that was the way that an angel ministered even to Jesus. And we're also told 
that at the end of his temptation, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, after Jesus uh, had uh, rejected the overtures of the devil and had gone through all the temptations, we're told in, Acts, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. Well, God has chosen angels to minister to us. And as surely as you are a child of God, according to Psalm 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord is with you and will have something to do with the way you're led. Now, we're a little speculation here. Uh, we don't know everything. But enough today about angels.